Subject. Einstein, America and the Ark of the Covenant. Hello again world and God's faithful. This is my eighth promotional video for my upcoming book to be released titled The Magnificence of the Three. The title is a reference to the three magnificent particles of the atom. They are the positive proton and negative electron, and the neutron that I claim to be God's particle. If this is your first time, welcome and thank you for stopping by. However, I recommend that you please watch previous videos as all are interlinked. This video for example must be viewed with videos 5, 6 and 7th in combination, as 5th video began laying out the foundation leading up to this video, of how God used the magnificence of the three in parables, to prove that he was fully aware of the atom when he declared that he created heaven and earth in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In videos 5, 6 and 7, I laid out circumstantial pieces of evidence preserved in biblical record that linked to the steps taken in processing the reproduction of the ark on earth, which a reasonable jurist can conclude from that the atom bomb was indeed the recreation of the ark of the covenant. So for this video, I am going to lay out the groundwork to support my claim that America was assigned the task of recreating the ark, the reasons why, and how the adoption by Einstein of America as his tribe, added the final piece of the puzzle that confirmed America's assignment. So let's get to it. We begin with facts that led me to claim that America was assigned the task of recreating the ark. The first two facts are biblical in nature but I found them in America's Declaration of Independence. In the first sentence of the second paragraph of Declaration, the Founding Fathers included the second most important command in structuring their new nation and this is what it says. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness. It is my claim that with this statement, God came through it and made it known then that this was going to be his new promised lands of the modern world. However, after information came together while writing book, I highly suspect that the Founding Fathers were not fully aware of the biblical parallel and spiritual meaning of their statement. In this one statement were two biblical links. First, I am claiming that the first section of sentence which states that, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, was a modern version and political translation of the second most important command, simplified for modern day-to-day -day living conditions. The second most important command for those unfamiliar with biblical concept, promotes the idea that God wants us to love our neighbors like we love ourselves. In other words, to treat them equally like we want to be treated. The first command is to love God with all our hearts. These are the two most important of God's commands. The Americans translated the second most important command into political form, by acknowledging on paper that God created all men equal, meaning that all citizens must be treated equally, regardless of who they are. It had been interpreted legally as a command for the government to treat all citizens equally regardless of color of skin, political beliefs, religious affiliation, rich or poor, or any other unique individual characteristics that separates one citizen from another. In order for each citizen to follow the biblical law, one must first acknowledge that all men were created equal by the Creator. This was the step one must understand and incorporate first into social life like a precondition, that makes it possible to perform a much more difficult act of loving others like loving oneself. There is no need for me to explain how difficult this is for all of us. Difficult to love others if you feel that you are better, or superior to them for one reason or another. The translation made the task simpler for day-to-day -day living conditions without acknowledging its scriptural inspiration and long-term goals. A biblical example of this was God's specific instructions to Israel. Even though they were God's chosen, God however was very firm in telling them that they were to treat aliens amongst them like they treated each other. Just because they were his chosen did not make them any more special than the aliens amongst them. It was that simple also. So America's foundation and intent as I claim, included the modern political version of the second most important command of the Bible. All must treat each other equally. The second part of sentence was even more staggering, and it is my claim that in this second section, the magnificence of the three appeared to have been intentionally planted. 
the second section of same sentence goes like this that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights that among these are life liberty and pursuit of happiness as discussed in previous videos god left links of the magnificence of the three beginning with the garden of eden to noah's sons to the signing of the contract between god and abraham including the structural design of the ark all these were scattered throughout the Torah and Old Testament as evidence that definitively revealed how God was fully aware of the atom. God even restructured the atom and made it visible, by turning it into the Ark of the Covenant. The magnificence of the three pattern also landed on Earth and it came about during process of developing the atom bomb as discussed in seventh video. So here, in the Declaration of America's intent to form a new nation, were three unalienable rights, not two, four, or ten as was designed later with the Bill of Rights, but just three of them, life, liberty and pursuit of happiness. So we have the Bible's second most important command and the magnificence of the three in one sentence of declaration to form a new nation. I found these parabolic facts as they are. There are more links between the new nation and God however. Here is a historical fact that strengthened my claim that America was chosen to recreate the Ark. The third most important circumstantial evidence that supports claim of America's special appointment was the fact that the Americans were the only people in the history of the world to defend the second most important command and did it with blood as far as I know. If you are not familiar with America's political history, here is a short summary. Before the Declaration of Independence was issued and some 80 years after, the American Caucasians bought and sold African Americans as slaves. Of the 56 founding fathers who signed the declaration believing that all men were created equal, 43 owned slaves. It is still a point of contention today of why these slave-owning founding fathers approved this idea of men being created equal, while owning slaves at the same time. I am providing a much more detailed explanation of reasons behind their motivations and decisions in book, and it had to do with brain design. For example, every time I see a painting of the room full of American founders in preparation for the signing of the Declaration of Independence, I feel like I am watching Eve's brain undergoing changes in the Garden of Eden when desire motivated her to go for knowledge. These founders were undergoing the same neurological changes that Eve's brain went through when she ate the fruit from the Tree of Knowledge that brought about changes in her brain. The Founding Fathers provided factual evidence of one structural design of the brain that our experts refer to as neurological pruning. This is the method the brain uses of weakening, pruning off, and eliminating neuron connections that are no longer needed or useful for survival. The brains of the Founding Fathers were undergoing this exact process at this point in time when they went against their nature, by acknowledging that all men were created equal to them. These men were beginning to process replacing negative emotions that they used to justify owning human beings with, with what appeared to be the emotion God placed emphasis on Israel to develop in the Old Testament. This emotion was remorse, and the Founding Fathers began the foundation of their new nation under God with neurological pruning of their own brains, by preserving examples of both neurological design, and of the practical application of remorse. Unbeknown to them that by doing so, they left a piece of evidence to support my claim that God had already chosen a new promised land of the modern world. To process the second most important command and integrate it into practical application for this new nation however, was a different matter altogether. It took 80 some odd years before enforcers of the second most important command confronted the violators and a civil war was the answer. Predictably, the violators lost this war but historically, America became the first people on earth to defend the second most important command with blood. As explained further in book, that by defending the second most important command, God planted both a clue and a blessing that manifested later with assigning the reconstruction of the ark on earth to the Americans. I did not mention this in book as it appeared after the final edits were done. Coincidentally, the man who led the confrontations with violators, Abraham was his name. Abraham Lincoln was the 16th President of America. He was responsible for defending the second most important command on earth. Of all names, of course it had to be Abraham. If you are not familiar with this man, it was his descendants that became God's chosen tribe known as Israel. 
conspiratorial weird but a fact that cannot be ignored nevertheless. The fourth piece of evidence has to do with the founding father who introduced the concept that all men were created equal. His name was Thomas Jefferson and he was a slave owner. If God had laid out the magnificence of the three in biblical record as the means to leave evidence as his trademark, then historical facts indicate that President Thomas Jefferson was a special emissary because as it turned out, he was conveniently the third president of America. It is one of those weird but convenient coincident that was consistent however, with how pieces of evidence were scattered in biblical parables, while others landed on earth as discussed in previous videos, but were all linked to the magnificence of the three. This was one example. He had to be the third president, not the second, fourth or any other number, but the third president. Thomas Jefferson, the founder who was responsible for including the second most important command in Declaration of Independence, became a representative of the magnificence of the three. The evidence was planted as if to ensure that we do not miss the biblical links. The fifth piece of evidence to support claim that America was chosen for the task was a shock when I first saw it. If you think President Jefferson was a convenient coincidence, then make way for this one. The American president who unleashed the recreation of the Ark on Japan, was Harry S. Truman. He was conveniently, the 33rd president of America. Was this a coincidence or was the 33rd president a spiritually inspired piece of evidence made simple for our understanding? If America was chosen as God's nation as I claim in book, no other president could unleash the ark but Harry S. Truman, the 33rd president. The link was not the usual magnificence of the three, but the emphasis of two threes. So three of America's presidents who were instrumental in their history, appeared to have been on special assignment from above. The third president was responsible for including the second most important command in America's foundation. The one who defended the second most important command was coincidentally named Abraham. Whereas the 33rd president was responsible for revealing the identity of the Ark of the Covenant to the world, by authorizing the use of the atom bomb that I claim, was the manifestation of the Ark. These are pieces of evidence that are discussed much more extensively in book, in addition to decision by Einstein the prophet to adopt America as his new tribe, that brought the final piece of the puzzle as to America's assignment as the new promised lands of the modern world. It all began with decision by a slave owner to introduce and advocate for the inclusion of the second most important command in their new nation's foundation. It is my claim therefore that the evidence points toward God replacing the lands once promised to Abraham with the American lands. The most important thing to consider though is that the ark belonged to God. America therefore could not recreate the ark without God's approval. So wherever the ark was, so was God. And the setup of supporting evidence began with the inclusion of the second most important command in their foundation, and then defended it with blood, by a president who was coincidentally named Abraham, the name of a friend of God from the Old Testament, whom God signed a covenant with regarding a promised land. In case someone accuses me of blasphemy, my claim is consistent with the last two times God spoke of the land's promise to Israel in Leviticus chapter 26 of the Torah, as well as when he returned as the Son and spoke of it in Acts chapter 1 of the New Testament. This is discussed further in book. In summary, I am laying out pieces of circumstantial evidence above for you to apply in determining whether there is a foundation to my claim that God had chosen America as the new promised land to replace the old ones he promised Abraham. If the atom bomb was the manifestation of the ark, and as the ark belonged to God, then it is highly probable that America could not recreate it without God's approval. Wherever the ark is, so is God. And lastly, consider that it was not the Americans who began the process that led to the fulfillment of the assignment of recreating the ark, but were Jewish scientists, immigrant descendants of Abraham who adopted America as their new tribe. And as I claimed in last video, only Abraham's descendants could do it as it was their ancestors whom God specifically assigned this task to in Exodus. So those are my facts presented to support my claim as to America's assignment as the new promised lands. Wherever the ark is, so is God. This is all for now. Hope you enjoy it as this is the last of the videos related to the Ark of the Covenant. 
we will explore some other subjects discussed in book related to design of brain development as God recorded in biblical parables. However, I have a bit of bad news. I am disappointed with latest news from publisher that the book release will be delayed for a bit. However, you can still place your pre-order with Amazon, iTunes, Barnes and Nobles and your Christian bookstores. I will give you updates as we get closer to release date here. But thank you for visiting. If you find video interesting, please like it, share it to friends and loved ones who are maybe seekers themselves. Subscribe to my YouTube channel especially for updates when next videos are uploaded. Go in peace and may God be with you step by step in your journey as he had been in mine. Take care of yourselves and if it is God's will, then we shall meet again. God bless.